invite you to turn your Bibles to James chapter 5. We're going to go through some scriptures tonight. And I'm going to title it, In Case of Crisis, Pray. James chapter 5. Um, so do me a favor and shut that book. Please. James chapter 5, let's see, verse, I think it's 13. This is verse right here. Verse 13. 13. You there? Yeah. James 5, 13 says, Is anyone of you in trouble? He should pray. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you tonight for the word of God. We thank you, Father, tonight that your word is true and that it's working in our lives. And Father, tonight we ask your blessing upon this time, this time of the Word, this time of fellowship. And we pray tonight, Lord God, that you would confirm your Word with signs and wonders following. Father, we believe in miracles tonight. And Father, Lord God, tonight we, we just want to lift up Sister Vicky tonight. And Father, we want to pray for her in the name of Jesus that you would touch her right there in that ICU bed, Lord. Father, Lord, what you did for others, do for her, her now, Lord. Father, she's, she needs you tonight. She needs that miracle, Father. And Father, Lord, I thank you, Lord, because she loves you. And, and she set her love upon you, that you're going to deliver her in her time of trouble. And Father, I thank you for the miracle tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And amen. Come on, give the Lord some praise tonight. Amen. He said, is any one of you in trouble? He said, he should pray. Amen. What do some of the different translations say out there? Say again. Is anyone among you suffering? You should keep on praying about it. Is anyone among you suffering? You should keep on praying about it. Amen. Um, I, I think that's awesome because, you know, I mean, it's, I was telling him the other night, the church the other night, that in the time of trouble is when we have a tendency to lose our faith or, or, or for our faith to kind of start being shaky, you know, and kind of like, you know, after a while, you know, you know, it, it you know, you, you start to question God. God's like, where are you at? I mean, I prayed. And, and it's like, you know, kind of like you want that instant oatmeal, like quick fix, you know. And uh, when was it when I was talking about Lazarus? We were at prayer the other night, and the, and, the, and the sisters called Jesus to come and pray for Lazarus. Lazarus was lying sick, and uh, the, the sisters, Mary and Martha, they cared about their brother. They loved him so much, and they, they said, they sent messengers, go get Jesus. As long as he's here, we know everything's going to be all right. Yeah. And so when they found Jesus, the messenger said, your friend Lazarus lies sick, and Man, he's close to death. You need to come and uh, pray for him or whatever, you know. And Jesus, it, it says, it, Jesus said, no, he's just sleeping. He said, I'll be there. I'll, I'll, I'll go when I'm ready. We got, you know. And it said that he stood another two days there, uh, wherever he was. I don't remember where he was, but he stood another two days. And by the time they walked to where Lazarus was two days later, uh, Lazarus had already died. And Lazarus, they even laid him in the tomb. And the sisters got mad. And they said, Jesus, if you've only been here when we told you to be here, it, all this would have been fixed. What's wrong with you? Right? And, and a lot of times, you know, we, we, like I said, we want you know, God to, to jump and move when, we're, when we want him to. And, and I, I wonder sometimes what if, if God would, would demand the same of us if things would be different in our lives, right? Yeah. Um, but, you know, uh, Jesus came and of course he healed last, not healed, and raised him from the dead. This man had already been dead four days, you know, and Jesus uh, uh, came and recalled him out of the grave and, and, and the man came forward and, and uh, the, you know, I mean, he, he lived from that point on and, uh, you know, I mean, and the great miracle, because of that many Jews believed in Jesus. Um, but, you know, I mean, it's in that time of crisis that we, 
Our faith is tested. Do you really believe? And that's what Jesus told Martha. He said, don't you believe in the, that he'll be raised? And she said, well, yeah, I believe he'll be raised in the resurrection. And he told her, no, you don't understand it. I am the resurrection and the life. You with me? And, and you know what I mean? And I don't know if she understood that. And I, I don't know sometimes. But you know, what it's, you know what brings us close to God is crisis. You know, and Job would have never known God in the, in the way that, that he did, but that he had went through this crisis that he went through. He lost everything, right? You remember the story of Job? He lost his, all his children, not one of them, all of them. I think there were seven or eight of his children were killed in one party. He used to pray for them all the time because his kids would want to go party. All of them would get together and get drunk and everything else. He'd go pray and ask God to forgive them. And, 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 and well, one of their birthday parties, he went and got out of a on the house. You know what I mean? The winds came and ripped that house to shreds and all of them died. All his cattle was taken. All his donkeys in another field were taken. All his sheep were taken. Camels were taken. His men servants killed. You know what I mean? All this happened in one day. He said, man, is, I mean, have you ever had one of those days and you, and you just phone call after phone call or something happened and what? And then you get in a wreck and then because of that, you know, get arrested because you had a warrant. And, I mean, it just gets worse and worse. This was one of those days. But instead of getting mad at God, instead of getting angry at God, he said, oh, God, bless your name, Lord. Bless your name. You with me? And, and then he got physically attacked. Because I believe it. I believe it. The devil can't come after you. Uh, you, you if he can't shake you in your money, in your friendships, or, you know what I mean, in, in, in your life, he'll even go after your children. If you, don't, if you still don't give in, then he'll try and attack your physical body. And he came after jo uh, uh, Job and, he, and, uh, and put boils all over him from head to toe. And poor Job sitting in ashes and all this stuff. You know what I mean? He, 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 he begins to just say, naked I come into the world, naked I'm leaving. But blessed be the name of the Lord. He never questioned God and never blamed God. And in one part in Job, he says this. He says, you know, uh, you know I, I knew about you before this incident. I knew all about you before the crisis because I went to New Hope Ministries over there in 10th and Troy. <laughs> but now that I've been through this crisis, now I really know you for who you are. Yeah. I've experienced you. You with me? Yeah. It's one thing to be hearing about Lazarus and be like, oh, that was lovely. Yeah. And it's another thing to go through a near-death experience or have somebody in your family get really ill or something like that and then you have to say, God, I believe you can do this, God. I believe you can raise them up out of there. I mean, what, what good does our faith do at church? You with me? What good does our faith do when we have our bills paid and gas is on <coughs> and your tank's on full and <coughs> you're getting ready to go eat because you got all the money and you got your, you know, all this stuff. What good does your faith then? You don't need it then. But when you're broke and you don't got no gas to go to work and then you go out and finally get a buck or two from somebody and your car's flat and you with me? And, and the dog's biting you on the way out and all this stuff. You know what I mean? Then that's when you need your faith. Say, oh God, I need you now. With the vieja yelling at you over here in the background. I told you, you fool. <laughs> huh? God, I need, your, I need your help, Lord. You with me? I'll tell you something, I've, never, I've seen a lot of people, you know what I mean, come out, you know what I mean, I came out of my deathbed, I come out of that, and I know God can raise up. I had a pastor friend of mine who knows the, knows the Lord for years, and, and, and traveled, ministering, healing people, all this stuff, great, great faith, you know, but he landed up in the hospital one time and laid there for about a month. And he says, man, Vince, he said, I've never gotten closer to God than I've been right now. Because it's when God puts you flat on your back that you're in total dependence on Him. There's nothing you can do. And so many of us, you take it for granted that you have two feet. And you're breathing right now and all you can think of is things to complain about. And why you shouldn't even, you're, you're tired and all this other stuff. You know what I mean? Instead of, man, thank you. I told even Oski today. I said, Oski, we're going in the hospital. I said, you ought to thank God for your health today, Oski. I, I, you know, I'm trying to make him understand. 
dude, you're not guaranteed that. If we went up to the children's ward, you'd see a bunch of children laying with tubes in them and all this stuff. You know what I mean? And, and you ought to just thank God that you're healthy today. Amen. Every day, you know what I mean? That you get up and you're able to go to work. You ought to thank God you have a body that's able to still work. Amen. You with me? A mind that can understand, hands that can work. You with me? Try getting arthritis to where your hands can't move and, 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 and you can't walk and all this. And, and You with me? It's a whole different ball game. Yeah. I don't want to do that, man. I'm tired. And this and that. Man, you know, you think a lot different when you're sick. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. Or when you're on the, the one in the, in the hospital or when you're the one in trouble right. or in crisis or they're coming to take your home and putting all your stuff on the front of the lawn. Right. Then you need faith. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. And that's when, it, that's when it matters. You know what I mean? That's when your faith is tested. Philippians chapter 2. Let's go there. Philippians, or Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 6. Let's go there. This one's a good one here. Let's see. Ephesians, Philippians. Uh, Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 6. Mine reads like this. Do not, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and, and petition, with thanksgiving, he says, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. Don't be anxious for anything. What does some of your translations say? Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Wow, I like that one. Amen. Thank, tell God what you need and thank Him for all He's done. Amen. But he said, what? Don't be, what does your say, Mary, about being anxious? What does it say there? Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs and don't forget to thank him for his answers. If you do this, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. Wow. Amen. Don't be anxious. Don't be, what did you say? Uh, don't worry pretty much about anything. Don't worry about anything. The message, what does it say? Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers. Letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. Amen. Huh. Amen. When you when you get in when you when you get in trouble or you get in an area of trouble or or a crisis, the first thing you do is worry. Yeah. Oh God, what am I gonna do? You get put over and your insurance laps. You know what I mean? You're in God, it's like, oh God, we're going to jail, Lord, or whatever it is. You know, you start to worry, and He says, "Don't worry about anything, but pray about everything." You know, that takes a lot of faith. Yeah, you with me? Yeah. To look and to say, you know what, man. <laughs> I, I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna trip in this situation. I'm gonna pray about it. I'm gonna pray about this circumstance, and no matter what, you know. What I mean, you gotta understand that one that God's in control of everything, and that you're not gonna go anywhere. You're not gonna be anywhere that God won't. That God did not ordain you to be. You know, I was hearing somebody just who was it yesterday? I think it was talking about Joseph, and they said, you know, Joseph was in prison, and they said, and God was with him. Could you imagine that? We know some people tonight that are in prison, yet God's with them there. You with me? Sometimes when we're out, He ain't with us because we're doing marvelous. But even in the midst of prison, God can, God can be right there with you. You with me? In a place of a hospital, God can be right there with you. You with me? It doesn't matter where you're at. You know what I mean? He can be right there with you. In your depression. You with me? If you can just believe, because see, that's I, I think that depression is like digging a hole, like just getting worse and worse and worse. But if you can be like a, uh, uh, if you can have the faith of a donkey, you can get yourself out. You remember the story I tell about the donkey that fell into the pit? 
And the man looks down there, and these looks, and the man, they don't have no way to get them out. They don't have a, 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 a you know, hoist, or they don't have a tractor to put around and lift him out. They have none. That thing's 2,000 pounds or whatever they weigh, you know. And they looked, and he thought and thought and thought he couldn't get him out. He says, there's no way. And he says, man, I just, look, I'm sorry, man. I'm just going to have to bury you. And so they got the shovels and began to bury him and throw in the dirt. Well, as the dirt hit his back, it fell off around his feet. And he would just shake and he would stomp. And they kept throwing and he keeps shaking and stomping. And pretty soon they threw so much dirty shake and stomped his way right on up and just <laughs> and walked right out of his pit. Because, you know what I mean? Because he, he, he didn't worry. He didn't give up. He didn't, some of us were just... You know, we're like the, we're like the sheep. Yeah. I heard one guy say, man, the sheep are, they're just cowards. You know? I said, man, he goes, you never heard of the, the you know, certain, you know, uh, the, the Pueblo lambs or you, CSU lambs or anything like that. He goes, lambs are cowards. He says, man, one time this guy was on his ranch on the farm. He was, he grew up on as a kid and, or his grandpa or something. And he said, he seen the lambs coming, man. One was walking around the, the barn. And he jumps around the corner and he's hiding from it. You know what I mean? As soon as the lamb got close, he went, boo! And he said, the lamb went, <laughs> and fell over. Just fell over dead. Oh my God. He just killed the lamb by scaring him, saying boo. He said, man, what a coward. He said, another one of the sheep had went to drink in the trough. You know, like the little things Jesus was born in? He went to drink in one of those. And he went so deep, he fell over and, and flipped in there with his little feet up, just, man, man. And he said he just really gave up and was just going to die there. That's all he did, man. Just gave up the ghost, man. You know? And he said they're just not, you know what I mean? And sometimes, he, and he was, he was paralleling that with Christian people. And he says sometimes, he goes, you know, the devil's this lion, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you hear of the... What is it? Detroit Lions. You don't hear the Denver Lambs. You know what I mean? You know, you know what I mean? But the devil's the dragon. You know what I mean? You want to be the dragons. You know what I mean? The devil's, you know, all this, you know, the, the snake or whatever. And you, and the, you know what I mean? And then he, Jesus is the Lamb of God. You with me? You know what I mean? But it's, it's funny, man, because, you know, he paralleled and he said, we're like them lambs. We just get into trouble, we get into a crisis, and we just kind of give up. We just throw in the towel and say, I can't do this. I, I, I you know, I, I, I think a pastor can, because, you know, God, he's been doing it for a long time, but I can't do this. You with me? And how many people you've seen just walk out and they never come back, they just say, I can't do it. You with me? And, and, you know, I mean, one of the main things that we try and teach and one of the things that I tell everybody, the hub of this ministry is prayer. You with me? Prayer is that, is that, that place with God. You know what? It puts you in a position where you're saying, God, I depend on you. And he looks down and says, they're trusting me. They're believing in me. I got to do something. You with me? Amen. Let me show you some other scriptures here. Let me just have you read some. Uh, Alex, I want you to read, uh, get this scripture out. Uh, Psalms 9, 9, I think it is. Naomi, get a, a Proverbs 11, 8. And then we'll go to Psalms 34. But get those ones and then I'll get Psalms 34. If you guys want to go with me to Psalms... Message. Psalm 9 9, Proverbs, what did I say, 11 4? Yeah, 11 8, and then we're, the rest of us are at Psalms 34. But uh, go ahead and read yours, Alex. He designed the Big Dipper. And Orion, yeah. <laughs> She's in Job. Oh my God. You're in the Proverbs 11, 8. The righteous man is rescued from trouble, and it comes on the wicked instead. 
Did you hear that? The righteous man, or the one that, the righteous is the saved people. He said they're rescued from trouble, and the trouble that they're supposed to get to goes on the wicked people. God's, God's a safe house for the battered and a sanctuary during bad times. He's a safe house for the battered and a sanctuary during hard times or the troubles or distress. Amen. Uh, Psalms 34, if you, for those of you that are there, it says in verse number 6, The poor man called, and the Lord uh, heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. And also 17, the righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them, and he delivers them from all their troubles. From how many troubles? Oh. One of them? Oh. You know why? Because I said, like I said, he, he knows you're depending on him. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all your understanding, will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. You with me? Because you're praying and you're not worrying. Worrying? Do you, do you, do you understand tonight that I know we, we don't like the three-letter word called sin? We don't like to hear anything that we do is sin. But you know what I mean, because you can understand, so now you go out and you snort some coke, man, that's the end. You go home and you're watching something naughty on, t on the internet, that's sin. But if you're just at your house and you're looking over your bills, e I don't know what we're going to do, it is sin. You with me? Anything other than, than faith is sin. If, you know why? Because faith is trusting God. Faith is believing God. Faith is saying no matter what happens, I'm going to believe in God. I'm going to trust in God. I'm going to depend on God no matter what happens. And you know what I mean? I, I like hearing that attitude. I like hearing that. And I believe the Lord hears it. But you know what? Not all the time. Uh, how many of you have ever heard that, that people say, preachers say or Bible school to you, whoever, they say that when you pray, there's three ways God answers you. One is yes, one is no, and one is not, not yet, maybe later. You with me? There was one lady that we had prayed for, man, and we, we knew this lady, such an awesome woman of God. She loved the Lord and everything. Man, our church fasted and prayed when we were at Church on the Rock. Man, we, we had intercessory prayer going. We had all this stuff going on, and the woman dies. And I didn't understand it. I'm like, God, I don't understand it. We, we fast and we pray. Your word said it. That if we believe, we'll have whatsoever we ask. You know what I mean? And all this stuff. But see, the thing is, is that in another part in Isaiah, he says, you know, my ways are above your ways. And my thoughts above your thoughts. You know what I mean? And, and, and how, you know, how are you going to understand the mind of God? He's, he'll blow your mind. You know what I mean? Think of your mind compared to the mind of God. You know, it's like taking a cup of water and, and dipping it into the ocean and trying to take the whole ocean in that one cup. You'll never do it. You'll never understand it. Why do things happen? You know, I preached a message at one time called, Why do good things happen? To, why do bad things happen to good people? You know? And we never know why things happen in our lives. And, and you know what I mean? We have to just have faith in God. Which, could you imagine Job standing there and saying, why did my sons and daughters die? All eight of them. Why did they all die? And God, I don't understand it. You're not fair. Could you imagine? But he trusted God. Through it all, he learned to trust in Jesus. You with me? Yeah. Through all the hard yeah. times. See, you know what I mean? That's where, that's, that's called life. That's called the, the, the life in God. It's being able to go through all these times and all these troubles and all these hardships. And, 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 and you know what I'm saying? God, I don't understand why this is happening, but I'm going to trust you anyway. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. I mean, there's been so many times in our lives 
you know what I mean, to look back and say, well, you know, because of this, we, you know, we lost a vehicle, we lost a house, we, this and that, and it's one thing to sit in here talking about hallelujah, praise the Lord, singing and running around in church. It's another thing to, to be driving away from a home that you owned and saying, God, I don't understand. This was for you. We're serving you. We're living for you. We're pastoring the church. We're doing all this for you. What? Why? You with me? But not, you know what I mean? But just with, with tears, man. And, and just hurt, you know what I mean? But saying, God, I, I, I trust you. You know what you're doing, Lord. You know what you're doing. And you know what? I'm not going to quit and I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep serving you. God, you're faithful. God, you know what I mean? Your, your, your blessings, you know, your, your, your mercy endures forever. And you know what I mean? And, and, and you got to keep doing it. You with me? You can't just serve him when the things are good, but then when things are not going your way, you run out the door and go get a drink. You with me? Or you just go back to the same old way, or you get, you're, you're mad at God, or, you know, most people, what they do is turn on the pastors of the church, not just me, many pastors, and say it's their fault that this happened, when it's not, man. You know, a lot of times we put the blame on our husbands or wives, we put the blame on our parents or our pastors, and really what we're doing, we're not saying, we're, we're just saying, I'm blaming you, but really in my heart, it's his fault. We just don't have the guts to say that. Oh, I'm not blaming God, but my husband, it was his fault, and you know what I mean, and this and that, but we're always putting the blame, and we're never, you know, acknowledging our sin, acknowledging our insecurities or doubts or fears, and saying, God, you did this. Why did you do this? Job's wife, what was talking about Job? Job's wife, she was right there with him. If Job was a righteous man, shunned evil, did nothing but good, and did all this, listen, behind every good man is a good woman. But could you imagine the bitterness in her heart? A man, you know what I mean? Sometimes you're able just like that burro, shake it off and stomp. But women are, you know, they're more emotional. And you're there and your children are gone now, your babies, you loved them. Your home. Everything you own, all your livestock, all your income is gone, everything. And she was behind Job when Job was still standing and saying, Blessed be the name of the Lord, scraping his boils off his body. You know what I mean? Trying to understand God. And the wife's behind him saying, Curse God and die. And, 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 and I mean, if you, if you look at it, and sometimes I'll make light of it, but it's not. But you know what I mean? It's like, but if you look at her, what she went through. You can see the bitterness. At least she wasn't a fake. <coughs> you with me? At least she said, hey, I'm, just, I'm mad at you, God. Why don't you curse him, man? He burned us. Took everything we own. What kind of God would do something like that? You with me? But you know what? In all that, it doesn't. Job just said, you're talking like a worldly woman. He rebuked her, you know what I mean? But she watched his faithfulness, and in the end, he received double for his trouble. He received all, you know, seven or eight more children. Yeah. Everything he had, he got double, exactly double of cows and donkeys and camels and homes and friends and all this stuff, and all doubled for his trouble. But I believe his wife was right there with it, enjoying it, but saying, God, I'm sorry, Lord. You with me? Yeah. I'm sorry I said that. I'm sorry I felt like that. And I believe, you know what I mean, in the midst of that, God says, I understand. Right. Just right. don't do it again. Yeah. <laughs> you with me? But in the time of crisis, you know what I mean, maybe she wasn't one that prayed. Yeah. It doesn't say anything. She did. And look what happened to her. She got bitter and angry in her heart towards God. You with me? God forgives and God does that if we ask. You with me? But it's like, you know what, I think we go through a lot more troubles than we should when we're living like that, right? But uh, let's see, Psalms 34 we read, 2 Corinthians 1, actually 1, 3, and 4. This one's a trip right here, watch this one. This is probably, I think this is it. It's the best one here. Alex, I want you to come and read it up here. You could, you could. One, three, and four. You got it. This is 
Praise be to, to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. For just as the suffering of Christ flow over into our lives, so also through Christ our comfort overflows. <laughs> what, did, what did yours say, Mary? One, one three, and four? Uh, is that it? Yeah. One, yeah, chapter one, verse three and four. Huh. Is that awesome or what? That's crazy. Uh, it's like God allows us to go through this stuff. And, and, and we're like, God, I don't understand it. I don't know why. And it's like, but after all, after we've come through it, God says, all right, now I'm going to use, come here, I want you to talk to her because this is what she's been. You're telling her something you've been through. You've been comforted by him. He comforted you, you're comforting her because he comforted you. And I mean, it's like this big cycle, you know what I mean? And it's like sometimes, and the apostles, Paul always said it, we've, we're, we're persecuted and, and, and not distressed, we're abandoned, we're, you know, uh, downtrodden, we're all these things that happen, but he said it's for your benefit. We look like fools, but you wise? We suffer, you know what I mean, with, 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 with nothing, with no money, but you blessed? You with me? Yeah. And, and and the whole time, you know what I mean? He's saying, we're going through stuff like Jesus went through for us. We're going through stuff so that you can see the gospel through our lives. And in turn, people can see the gospel in your lives. Yeah. And be comforted with the same comfort you received from the comforter. Yeah. <coughs> Say that real fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's like God's a, you know what I mean? It's, it's a trip because, and, and many of you know that. Many of you have done that. And you ministered to people out of, an, out of an experience that you've had, not out of something you, you know what I mean? It's one thing to go say, oh, you ought to hear my pastor's testimony. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you're talking to a gang member or something like that, yeah, that's good. And, you know what I mean? That's fine. But if you're talking to a mother who, who, who's, who's, who's had a, a miscarriage or, or, or something like that, you know what I mean? My gang thing doesn't really apply to her. You know? Or somebody that's lost that loved one or whatever, you know what I mean? Or an, an over, you know, whatever, you know what I mean? I keep kind of, it just, you know, you have to have been there and went through this to be effective to those who've been there and done it. You with me? I mean, it's, it's one thing to be telling people about, you know, crack or heroin or this and that, and you shouldn't do it and this and that. But to be a living example of that and say, look, this is what it's done to me. This is what I went through because of that stuff. And if God can save me, he can save you too. It's one thing for me to tell him, hey, God can deliver you from that and, 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 and pray for him and stuff. And, and God, you know, may do it. But it's another thing for you to have lived through something like that and be able to minister to their lives and watch God move. You know what I mean? And, and, and you know, and in it all, you're praying and asking God, God, give me the wisdom here. Is I don't know what to say or do. And that's where many people get stuck, is that they don't really know what to say. Or they feel like inadequate in things to say. And I, I just tell people, if you got a mouth and you can at least just have the boldness to open it and say something, God will use you. Are you with me? It's kind of like, I don't know if you've ever, if you've ever been around and you've heard the gift of prophecy or tongues and interpretation of tongues. You know, God may give you a word, you know what I mean? He may say something to you, and it's just one word. It's just maybe one thought. And as you open your mouth to say that one thought, and to be bold enough to say it, God fills you with the rest of the words, and something comes out of you, and you're like, wow. Because you were willing to just take a step of faith and open your mouth. 
I've put myself in situations where, believe me when I tell you, I'm not the, you know, I, I got friends like Pastor Bobby or, you know, Pastor Bobby Aragon or others like that who are just, man, hey, how you doing? And they're just full of, you know what I mean? They're just people, persons, you know what I mean? And they're just able to talk everybody, hey, Pastor, everywhere he goes, you know, he knows everybody. And I mean, he's just like that. I like that personality, but it's not me. I'm the kind who just kind of walk in. So. <laughs> I'm not like that, you know what I mean? But, you know. But it's the Holy Ghost when I, you know what I mean? When, when, when there, there's times he fills my soul, and you know what I mean? There's times. One time I was handing flyers, and, 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 the, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me on 4th Street. And he says, I'm walking down by the bars right there. And, and right there was a porno shop right there. And he says, I want you to go in. Because we had tracks that were like a $100 bill. And on the back it said, what money can't buy. And, you know, give you a whole list. And God says, we spoke to him. He said, I want you to go give that owner one. I said, are you nuts? Uh -uh. I'm not going in that place. I rebuke you, devil. And the thing you know, the way you know it's God is because he don't leave you. He'll just keep nagging you. There. Be, come on, go do it. Are you going to do it? Come on, come on. Are you going to do it? I'm like your kids. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? You know? Because he has a purpose. And I believe there's times where he'll just say, okay, you're not going to do it. I'll use somebody else. But I knew it was the Lord, but I submitted it to my wife because she was with me. I said, I really believe the Holy Spirit told me to go in here and have that guy a flyer. And she says, well, obey God. I said, I don't want to go in this place, man. But I went in and I opened the door, put my head down, walked down the aisle, went right to the counter where he was, and he's sitting there reading a the magazine or something, looks up to me, you know, and, and I said, hey, I just wanted to give you one of these. I said, it's a, it's a, it's a thing that tells you about money, what money can't buy. I said, but God sent me in here to hand this to you. And I said, and I hope you read it. And I said, God bless you. And I just walked out, boom, you know what I mean, shaking, man, scared to death. I said, I don't want to be in a place like this. You know, but it was, you know what I mean, when, when I went in, and I don't know exactly what I told him, but it's been many times where I've just took the step of faith to open my mouth and God will Amen. use me to help comfort other people, to help me speak to other people, to help me minister to other people. Amen. You with me? Because I was just willing to, to, to be that donkey, like Balaam's donkey, <laughs> another donkey that spoke. I was reading it last night in Second Peter. Balaam's donkey, not having a voice, yet he spoke to the prophet, telling him, what are you doing? God will use animals if he has to. You with me? But, uh, you know what I mean? In, in, in all that, you know what I mean? It's warning, and all that, it's preaching, and all that, it's protecting, it's comforting others. And, and uh, you know what I mean? When, when I do funerals, like this one I'm doing tomorrow... You know, I mean, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, all I do is kind of get an outline in there, and I pray a lot. God, help me, Lord. I don't know what to say. What should I say, Father? I'm not asking my wife. I'm not asking a friend. I'm not asking anybody. God, you know what, for me, the right words to say. Are you with me? And it's not easy to get in front of a bunch of people you don't know and, 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 and speak. The, you want to speak the words that are going to penetrate their hearts. You with me? Not just get up there and be like a prophetic, you know, somebody that gets up there and just speaks and gives a scripture that they use every service and all this stuff and look professional. I want to touch hearts. Yeah. You with me? And I don't know what I'm going to say. I don't know what I'm going to do. You know what I mean? I'm just, I just know, you know what I mean? Tomorrow I'll be praying a lot, man. And, 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 and finding some scriptures and stuff and asking God for direction, you know what I mean, to minister to these people's lives because you got a short time to get in there and to speak, you know. And uh, I just do it. I just do it. And because of my experiences, because of what I've done and places I've gone, I just open my mouth and God uses me. And then you come back with testimonies. Amen. You with me? But, you know what I mean? What do I do in that time of crisis? What do I do to help people? I pray. You with me? I don't get up there in my abilities and my knowledge and go through. And mo some pastors, you know what I mean? Most pastors will have a book. You know, I got two of them in my office for ministers. And they're just handbooks you can go through and just read right through. And it'll look like you're an eloquent speaker. You with me? But I'm not that kind of preacher. 
I want to go in there, man, and just with the with the with the Holy Spirit speaking to their lives, and, and, and you know what I mean, and, and touching it because they don't need some you know hundred dollar preacher to come in there and give them something that's from a book. I want to give them something that's from the very throne of God, right there, served fresh and hot, like Alex, man, every day. Got something for you. You don't need no Doritos. Got some fresh here for you. You with me? How do I get it? Prayer. Praying, depending a lot on God and asking Him for direction. Amen? Amen. Let me get a couple more scriptures and we'll close here. So Naomi, if you would give me Psalms 22, 16. You got your thingles or no? Yeah. Psalms 27, 5. Who else is here? Val, you got your Bible? Yes, sir. Psalms 32, 7. Alex, Psalms 37, 39. Yeah, 32, 7. Sister Lucy, Psalms 46, 1. Sister Mary, Psalms 91, 15. Uh, 27, 5. And then let me see. You got one, Angela? Do you have your... Read, read Jer at the when I ask you read Jeremiah two twenty seven and twenty eight. Jeremiah two twenty seven and twenty eight. Go ahead, Nice. It says uh, dogs have surrounded me. A band of evil men has encircled me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. Do they have it right? Psalms 22. I think it's 16. 11? Try 11. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near and there is no one to help. Okay. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near and there's no one else to help me. Psalms 27 5 says what? Trouble, he, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of this uh, tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. In the day of trouble, he'll hide me. He'll protect me, right? Mm -hmm. Did he? You know, remember Jesus said, "He said, because a lot of times we don't think we should go through hard times as Christians." He told you, in this life, you're going to have tribulation. Mm -hmm. The psalm says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Amen. He said, you're going to have many hard times in your life. That's why you need the Lord tonight. Amen. That's why I'm wondering, like, man, you guys are crazy. Why don't you turn to God? Amen. You with me? Man, if you turn to God, he, you, no matter what you go through, He's going to deliver you out of them. Yeah. You with me? What's the next one? Um, Psalms 32, five, uh, 7, Valerie? Was it you? Yes. Go ahead. For you are my hiding place. <laughs> you are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. And you surround me with songs of victory. Amen. Psalms 37, 39. Is that you, Al? Yeah? 37, 39. The salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in time of trouble. Amen. The salvation of the, righteous. of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold, stronghold in time of trouble. Amen. Psalms 46, 1. Now God is our refuge and our strength and ever-present help in trouble. Ever-present help in tr trouble. This one right here I liked a lot because, because you remember one of the things Sister Vicky was doing was remembering and Sister Rosalie memorizing Psalms 91. But look at verse 15 there, because this is, this is what I am standing on for her. What does it say, Sister Mary? This 
Psalms 91, 15. Anybody got a different translation there? because we trusted in him. You know what I mean? And I, I really believe that. And I stand on that. You know what I mean? When you're, when you're there, you can't speak for yourself. You with me? You can't even say nothing. That's when I believe God is right there saying, I got this. I got you. Don't even, have, don't even worry about it. You with me? Because it's one thing to be able to scream and yell. And, 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 but, but see, the thing is, right now you're investing in your Christian life. Right now you're investing in your spiritual health and well-being. And when time of trouble comes and calamity comes, even if you're flat on your back and can't say a word, God said, I got this. I remember every word you said. I remember the times you've trusted me. I remember what you put into your memory. That, and, and I believe it. The other day, we, I was telling him the other day, I don't know if your Sister Rosa had told you, one of the ladies we went to see at uh, St. Mary Corwin Hospital, they said she wasn't going to make it. She was on life support and all this stuff. We went in there. I didn't even know who she was, but I spoke to her as if I knew who she was and I had authority. And I said, hey, uh, I called her by name and I said, listen, I said, my name is Pastor Vince Diaz. I said, we're here to pray for you. I said, because I know the last thing to go is their hearing. And I said, so, but the entering of the word brings forth light. And I said, and you can hear me. I know you can hear me. And I said, I begin to preach to her. And her eyes opened up. They said, don't even talk to her. She can't respond. She responded to me. And I spoke right to her. And I prayed for her. And I told her, ask Jesus to come into your heart. And, and you know what I mean? And God's going to help you. You watch. God's going to help you right now. And, 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 and you know what I mean? And then I, I read her the word. And then we left. And then it wasn't when we were, when about an hour later, we were talking to the sister-in-law who called. So my husband had just called. She didn't even know we went. She says, yeah, we, he was there, but then he left because we just missed him. I think I seen him, but we, I didn't know who he was. We missed him going in, prayed for a left to track. We went and prayed and left. When he came back, they came in, talked to, talked to him, and, they, and they, for some reason, I don't know why, they took all the pipes, all the things out of her. She woke up and was, by that time, was already talking to, the, to her brother, and they said she wasn't even going to make it. By the time, you know what I mean, her brother was there, they did all the pipes, she's talking to him, and they said she's going to be fine. You with me? And it's like, you know what, God is not a man that he should lie. God is a healer. God is still in the miracle business. God, you know what I mean? He's still in our times of trial. He's right there. He's like, son, you just tell him. I'll do the work. You just open your mouth. You're my representative. You're not there representing Vince Diaz or New Hope Ministries. You're there representing Jesus Christ. And you just lay hands on the sick. I'll recover him. That's all our, that's all our responsibility is. Is to trust him enough to get out there and do what he said to do. I said, man, we're like eternal life uh, 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 insurance agents. I said, that's what we are. People are trying to, you know, get health insurance and all this stuff. I said, where's the eternal life insurance people? You should be, you know what I mean? See him come in, do deck out and get out there and be, hey, we're just here to want to tell you about it. eternal life insurance. What? Where are you going to spend eternity? You know what? You can have this and it's absolutely free. Jesus paid the price on the cross for your sins. And all you got to do is accept him as your Lord and Savior. And you too can live eternally with him. Amen. You with me? And I mean, it's just stuff like that. It's just so simple. It's hard, you know. Let's see. Am I done or did we have one more? Oh, Jeremiah 2, 27 and 28. Watch. Listen to this one. Worship stone idols and sacred coals as if they had created you and have given you life. You have rejected when you're in trouble, you cry to me for help. Go cry to the gods you made. There should be enough of them to save you, because Judah has as many gods as they have counts. He was talking to the people of, of Judah there, or Israel, 
And he was telling them, because they make all these idols, they make all these things, they worship all these things. And God's like, you know, you guys worship all these things. He says, but then where are you at when you're in trouble? Oh, God. Have you even heard the atheists cry out? They don't believe in God, but when they're dying, oh, God, help me. If you guys ever get a chance, I, I went on YouTube the other day and I watched a, uh, an atheist who now is a Christian preaching the gospel to the, to, on TBN to the, to the people. I watched the atheist who got saved or something like that, who was a counselor, who was a professor in a college, in a, in a, in a, you know, in a college, a well-known college, who did not believe in God or anything like that. But then when he died and had an experience with hell, he come back believing. And now he's out there preaching and sharing his testimony all over the nation about what God can do. And I'm thinking, oh God, you're, you're a trip. Take the worst of the worst, turn them around. You know what I mean? The atheists, they don't believe in God. And for him now to be preaching the gospel, God's a trip. That's what he does, turns it around. People who are the hardest, people who are the black sheep, people who are the worst, God spins them around. The whole family can't, what can they do? Say, God's... God, you know, if they know he be changed you, shh, there is a God, you know? But I like that. He says, well, why don't you go call upon your gods now uh, that, how, you know, that you worship and stuff like that, you know? But, uh, you know, I mean, I thought, man, thank God we call on the name of the Lord, on a God that has hands and can touch, you know what I mean? I heard somebody say today, it says something about... Which I think it was Jesse Duplantis I was listening to. He said, I don't know, he was talking about the Trinity, the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Jesus was, you know, the, the Holy Spirit was the Spirit, the touching, and, but Jesus was the head. And he said, but we are his body. We're his hands and his feet. We're the ones that go out and touch. You with me? We're the ones that go out and, and love. We're the ones that go out and pray. We're the ones that bring hope. You with me? Amen. That hope and treasure in, in the jars of clay. That hope in you is the, the Christ in you is that hope of glory. Amen. For what? For other people. For those who are lost. Those who are at, where, are at now where you were just not months or, or years ago. Right. You with me? Amen. People that are going through hard times or whatever. Or maybe it's you as a Christian tonight going through a hard time. You know what I mean? And it's like right now you need more faith than you've ever needed. And he said, man, if you have faith like a mustard seed, you'll move mountains. You with me? And it's like, you know where our faith is tested is right there on the water. In the worst times of your life, that's where the glory of God's going to shine the most. That's where God's going to use it. You know what I mean? That experience. Have you ever seen that the movie Cour Courageous? I know it's a movie, but, the, but, the, but you know, I've, I've known so many people just like that. Who the husband who lost his daughter. I mean, his life was great. He was kind of a Christian, right? Mm -hmm. Went to church, put a tie on Sunday, but he was never passionately pursuing God until his daughter died. You with me? Somebody was the closest to his heart, but it's like, gee, sometimes, you know what I mean? It's like God uses stuff like that to wake us up, to bring us to our senses, to make us... You know what I mean? To realize, you know, when I remember him speaking to his pastor in that movie, and his pastor was telling him, he's like, why did this happen and stuff? And his pastor was saying, you know, it's kind of like living without an, a limb or something now. Mm -hmm. Like you're going to have to go through this now and to trust God now with this loss. He says, but in them dark places and in them, in them you know, in the place of despair, God's going to meet you there, and you're going to know God more than other people who just kind of show up at church once in a while. It's them hard times that are going to make you a mighty person of God that trusts Him. I wish I had that scripture. I don't have it, but in Job where he said, you know, I used to know about you, but now I know you, Lord. Now I know you. Through all this stuff I've been through, now I trust you. You with me? And it's like no matter what you've used or what, what you've been through in your life thus far, you know what I mean? Just hang on because there's a whole bunch more you're going to go through. But it's like through it all, you know what I mean? God's there all the way. You don't even have to worry. All you've got to do is keep following Him. Keep following, keep trusting Him, keep praying. Prayer is what's going to make you, get you through this. No matter what, prayer. You with me? 
keeping close to God, asking God for help, and in them times of trouble, crying out to Him. And God said, I'll answer you. It may not work out the way you, th you want it to, but no matter what, God will turn it around for your good somehow. You with me? Amen. Can we give the Lord a hand of praise to Him? Naomi, if you want to come. I was thinking of that song that 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 or, or that that the scripture that talked about when you know when the when you walk through the water, you'll not be drowned. When you walk through the fire, you'll not be burned. For I, the Lord, am with thee, whithersoever you go. You know what I mean? He's with you. He didn't say you're gonna walk uh, on streets of gold and all this. Now he said you're gonna walk through some waters, like a Katrina, like something like that. But he said no matter what you go through over there, I'll be with you. I'll help you rebuild. Walk through fires, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It wasn't until they were in the very midst of the fiery furnace yes. that the that the king says, "Did we not throw three in, three in there? They look, there's four in there, and one looks like Jesus. Looks just like the Son of God. Where are you gonna meet him at? Right in the midst of your fiery furnace." Don't, don't, don't try and pray, God, keep me out of it. Don't, don't let me go through nothing. Don't, just keep me, help me, you know what I mean? Tell God, just give me courage. Amen. Give me courage and strength to go through the valley of the shadow of death. Whatever it is you need me to go through, God, give me the strength and courage to make it through. I'm just going through this. He didn't say you're camping there. He said, I'm going to go through the valley of the shadow of death. He didn't say you're going to die. He said, you just may go through and feel like you're going to die. But he said, I'll bring you out on the other side. You with me? And then on the other side is your testimony. I tell people there's no testimony without a test. And there's no message without a mess. You with me? Through your mess, God will make you a, make you a messenger. You with me? It's, you know what I mean? Stand with me tonight. When you're going through hard times, when you're going through struggles, I'm telling you, I'm encouraging you tonight. Begin to open your mouth and minister to people. When you're going through hard times, it's not the time for you to shut up and just go into a depression and this and that. When you're going through hard times, it's the time for you to begin to shut the devil up and begin to go tell people about Jesus. You with me? Not to back up, but to push forward. You with me? I told somebody the other day, I think it was Freddie or somebody that I let come and preach and stuff. I said, see, the thing you don't understand is the more you preach and the more you give, the more God gives to you. As you minister to others, he ministers to you. As you water others, he waters you. As you give, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, he says, shall men give back unto your bosom. You with me? Why? Because you're doing it. No matter what you see, no matter how you feel, we as Christians got to stop feeling so much. I was reading it tonight, the fruits of the Spirit. You with me? He said, walk in these fruits. You know what I mean? He said, uh, those, who have, those who are in Christ Jesus have crucified that carnal flesh and passions thereof. You with me? We've got to crucify that. Well, I feel like my, you offended me and this and that. Grow up, baby. Grow up already. You're not four years old. You're not eight years old. You with me? Ask God. Give me strength. I want to be mature in Christ. I want my feelings and all that, man. Child, let God get them all soldered. Get them all, how do you say it? We cauterized. Already. Haven't we went around by our feelings all our lives? By who feel, you know, they make me angry and all this. A cauterize them. How? By nailing your passions and not jump to the cross. By dying, by crucifying yourself. You with me? Come on, church. You guys, man. <laughs> Amen. My goodness. You made Jesus discouraged. <laughs> Oh, I thank God for the gift of preach. You know why I said that? Because every time I come in here and preach, I don't care what I'm going through or anything like that. I walk out of here, oh, man, I'm fire for Jesus. Why? Because I'm ministering to you whether you listen or not. 
I'm ministering to you. And as I'm ministering to you, I'm hearing the very words I'm saying. I walk out of here excited. I'm walking out. Thank you, Jesus. I got faith. It's rising up. Why? Because I'm preaching the word. And I'm hearing the word. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You with me? That's why you, you know what I mean? The, the, the pastors preach themselves out of stuff. You with me? But the thing is, is you got to jump on it and say, man, I better get involved in that too. I better start telling more people. God, instead of the singing the blues songs. You with me? I mean, don't you want God to use you that way? Don't you be an encouragement and all that stuff? You don't want to be the kind of Christian goes around... Oh, like lepers encouraging each other in your disbelief and dysfunctions and your depression and all that stuff. Because you're, you know, birds of a feather flock together. You want to be a leader. You want to be one that's walking this, we're living this stuff. Not just coming to church and hearing and hearing and hearing. And, and you know what I mean? And never doing. Let it get in your spirit. Let the life, that spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you. Let him lift up and raise up your mortal body. Let him encourage your soul. You with me? That's what this world's looking for, church. I'm telling you, they're tired of looking into a church that's boring, dead, that's dry, and that's complaining more than they are. They're looking for life. They're looking for something that's going to lift them up, bring them out of their darkness, going to set them free. Yeah. You've got to be that one. You with me? You've got to be that one. Yeah. Amen? God's looking for your faith. Your faith will take you wherever God, you know what I mean? You want to go, if you'll go with God. You with me? You want to stay down here in your doubts and unbelief and, you know... But I tell people, you, you you ought to be soaring with eagles, and you're down here hanging with chickens and turkeys. You with me? You know what caused those eagles to soar? The 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 the, the pressure against them. You with me? The more pressure, the more air it lifts them higher. They just expand. They, oh Jesus! Glory to God! I've been I've been called to soar. You with me? They, you don't see eagles on there flapping like a chicken. They, they, they stay high. They stay above the storms. They go into the very eye of that storm. And, shh, and you'll just see them soaring above everything. They're not down here nitpicking and well, who offended who and all this stuff like that. You know what I mean? It's sad that you see the church in that condition. Everybody walking around talking about who's wrong and who's offended and why they upset me and this and that. You're a bunch of turkeys. I ought to be soaring on eagles' wings. That's where he called you to be. You with me? You read the revelations and you see things like to him that overcomes, well, I grant unto him. You know what I mean? This crown or to be seated with. And you know what I mean? To him that overcomes. Not to them that hang around there talking about what, the, what didn't go right in their life. Get up from there. Take your, take the Spirit of God. You with me? Let Him fill you up. Amen. Let Him fill you up. Let Him take you where you, you know what I mean? Remember that song, Lord, lift us up where we belong? Come on, man. Why are we standing down here? You with me? How are you going to minister to people? And how are you going to bring them out of depression and darkness and all that junk if you're down there with them? Amen. Tell them, hey, God loves you. Jesus loves you. You know, you know that there's heroin addicts, there's drug addicts that sit around talking about gospel things. What's the difference between you and them? You got power, you got life, you got the fire of God, you got the spirit of God. That spirit is we're gonna wake them up. You with me? That's that fire that they need. You with me? Somebody on fire for them. Come and come up, rub on them, and you know what I mean? You take fire to a Dry weed, it's, it's gonna go up. You with me? They're looking for that fire and that, that passion in your heart and in your soul. How does that come from your time spent with God? You with me? You spend that time with God. You get in there and you encourage yourself in the Lord. You build yourself up in your most holy faith. How? Praying in the Holy Ghost. Oh God, you come out of there, man. Oh, ain't nothing I can't do. Where's that devil at? I'll tear him up. Where's that junkie at? I'm going to lift him out of there. Where's that person in trouble? I'm going to pray with them out of that mess. 
That's what the world's looking for. Not some dead church or some dead Christian. You with me? Jesus wasn't like that. Don't you? We call ourselves Christians. Don't we? Isn't that like a, you know, like a one like Christ? Come on, church. Amen? Would you, do you say tonight, would Jesus be like me? Would he be like you tonight? If you're here tonight and you're discouraged and all that, man, I'm telling you what, the only reason you're there is because you're keeping yourself there. You're the one that's got you there. If you're a Christian, you have no business in those areas. With this word in your hand, with the, with the message I'm preaching right now, some of you ought to be jumping, dancing, running all over this church. Are you with me? Come on now. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. How's your family? Is ever going to be changed unless you're changed? Come on now. You want to see them on fire for Jesus and this? Then you better get some fire in you. You better get some power in you. You better get something better and more attractive than some dope. Than some Percocets or some, some, some whiskey. You better get something in you that's more attractive than that junk. And I'm telling you what, you get the Holy Ghost and God will, I mean, they, psh, you don't need that stuff. They'll be looking at you like, man, that dude's nuts. He's, is he drunk? I'm drunk in the Holy Ghost, on fire for Jesus, higher than I've ever been. Because of him. Because of him. You with me? The Lord, help us tonight. You're in trouble, pray. You got problems, come to this altar tonight over here. Amen. Don't even think about it. Don't even let the devil talk you out of it. Pray tonight. What is it you're going through tonight? Ask him for help. Ask him tonight. He's here. He loves you so much. All he needs is a little bit of faith tonight. There's nothing God can't do for you. If you will only believe there is nothing God cannot do for you. He can do all things, and you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Father, Lord God, if we've ever needed you, it's now. Father, I pray tonight you lose the strength, you lose the power, you lose the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Lord, greater than anything we can do, greater than any message we can preach. God, we depend on you tonight. Holy Ghost. Light of fire in our soul tonight. Come on, if there's anything in your life, if you've been backslidden in your heart, begin to repent right now and ask you, God, I'm sorry. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, God, if I walked away from you, God. I want to be close, not far. I need you now, God. I can't change yesterday. I can't change my past, but I can't change my future, oh God. I'm going on with you, no matter what anybody else would do. I'm going to serve you every day of my life. I'm going to live for you. I'm going to shine for you. I'm going to praise you, Lord. I'm going to lift you up, Lord, in the darkest places. I'm going to let the light of Jesus shine in the darkest hours of our city. I'm going to let our city know that my Jesus is alive. He's still a healer. He's still a deliverer. He's still a savior. He hasn't changed. My God is still the same. Jesus, you're still the same. What a mighty God you are. Oh my God, lift us up tonight. Lift us up tonight by the power of the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit of the living God, touch your church. Come on, church. Stretch out your faith tonight. God don't need to hear your problem. He needs to see your faith. He's not moved by problems. He's not moved by your issues. He's moved by faith. Lord, we trust in you. We believe in you. We have faith that you can do it, Lord. What you said you're going to do. You're not a man that you should lie. Oh, you're a God that we can trust.
trust him, Lord. You're a God that opens blinded eyes, causes dead to rise. Father, Lord, you're still a healer, God. You're a deliverer, Lord. You heal broken hearts tonight. Oh, my God, you're an awesome God. We believe you. We trust you, Lord. We have faith tonight. Oh, my God. For those tonight who may feel far away from you, reach out and touch them now. Reach out and touch that heart, God. Reach out, Lord. Do what I can't do, Lord. Do what only the living God, the Spirit of God can do tonight, Lord. Turn it around, Lord. Turn it around, Lord. What the devil meant for evil. Turn it around for our good tonight. In the name of your Son, Jesus, Lord. We believe. We receive, Lord. We stand on faith. On the solid rock of Christ, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand, Lord. All other ground is sinking sand. I trust you, Lord, tonight. I trust you, Lord. Oh, there's nothing God cannot do. There's nothing my God cannot do in that. Oh, but you got to believe it. you got to believe it. I could preach to you a thousand hours, and if you don't believe it, it's done you nothing. You've got to believe it for yourself. You've got to believe for yourself tonight. But your God is not a man that he should lie. Your God is God, and there is no other like him. Yes, Lord, you are the great I am. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the first and the last, oh God. You're life. You're the resurrection and the life, Jesus. Oh, yes, you are, Lord. You are. Yes, Lord, you are. Come on, somebody just minister to him. Somebody minister to him tonight. Just tell him who he is My shepherd, my banner, Lord. Yes, my God, you're amazing. My righteousness, oh God. Yes, you are, Lord. Lord. You are my Lord. 